Good evening, everyone. My name is Chelsea Wilness. I'm a professor of organizational behavior and the university's chief governance officer. Welcome to spring 2021 graduation celebration. I would like to acknowledge that although we are celebrating virtually this year, I'm speaking to you from the University of Saskatchewan's main campus, which is situated in the traditional territory of Treaty 6 and the homeland of the Métis. We pay our respects to the First Nations and Métis ancestors of this place and reaffirm our relationship with one another. I want to extend a warm thank you to our performers who began our celebration, to the drum group Buffalo Boys Productions for performing today's honor song, to Kate Nashalobe, accompanied by Matthew Praxis on piano for O Canada, and Amanda Goller, accompanied by Kiefer Paul on guitar for the Métis Anthem. We are so fortunate to have you all take part in our ceremony today. Thank you. In our celebration today, you'll hear from our elder and knowledge keeper, Roland Duquette, and our president and vice chancellor of the university, Peter Stoichev will each give their address to the graduands. Next, you'll hear from our Chancellor Grit McCreeth, and she will explain about convocation and what we would normally expect to see when we are in person for our ceremonies. 
Following the Chancellor, we will present to you one of this year's esteemed honorary degree recipients who will offer their message to the graduating class of 2021. The Dean's Message and Student Awards will be presented after the honorary degree and will be followed by a special message from your Alumni Association, of which you officially become a lifelong member now that you are graduating. We will close the ceremony with a song from the university's very talented music department. And now I will welcome Elder Roland Duquette, followed by President Peter Stoichev and Chancellor Grit McCreef. Good day, everyone. Again, I welcome you all you know, to the Treaty 6 territory, the homeland of the Metis, and also the, the graduates that are, you know, their special day today that you, we welcome you into, into, into our setting as what we are as people that connect with the Mother Earth. Eh? And then when we start that, you know, we, we can apply our, our skills to be grounded for what we learn through time and, uh, and in the future. So that brings you back to your uh, careers that you're going to be going to, eh? taking, taking hold of your, of your lives, uh, later on your families, your community, and maybe your government, and maybe your, your country as well to serve however you believe yourself to have that skill of communicating first of all, applying your skills to maintain that harmony that we talk about in our, in our country, in our lives as well, that you know it comes from a home. From your home, what you did, what you are, that dictated you to be that person that has that special skill that you, you've earned for yourself through dedication, through uh, sacrifice, your families, sacrificing your your loved ones, your community as well. Maybe you know we don't know, but you are the driving force for your own uh, family, for your own community, and for your for your country as well. When they when you uh, contribute to the economy, and I and I thank you all for for listening. Uh, Hello, I'm Peter Stoichev. It's my great privilege to be the president of the University of Saskatchewan and to be speaking to you today from this historic Convocation Hall. I'd like to congratulate you on your remarkable accomplishment in completing your degrees, diplomas, and certificates. While our Convocation format has changed, it does not in any way diminish your tremendous achievement. I regret I cannot be with you in person to shake your hand and congratulate you as you walk across the stage to the applause of your families and friends and supporters. Please take a moment to thank them for everything they have done to get you to this point. None of us achieves anything this big without the help of others. You're graduating at a time when everything has changed and will not be quite the same again. The pandemic has taught the world much about empathy and understanding, and about the importance of science-based decision-making. It has exposed many inequities in our world and the vulnerability of marginalized peoples. It has highlighted the need for governments, public health experts, and citizens to work together. And it has demonstrated the importance of a university such as ours in the fight against one of the most pressing challenges of our lifetimes. No other year in our university's history has asked so much of us individually and collectively. As Saskatchewan's research intensive medical doctoral university, we have been a strategic and critical partner in the province's response and recovery efforts, supporting the health system, finding solutions, and working to help Saskatchewan emerge stronger from the pandemic. Many of you have contributed to those efforts and I thank you for your perseverance and resilience and hard work during this past extraordinary year. If I were with you to congratulate you on the stage today, I'd be saying that you made it. And now we all need you to go out and make the world a better place. It's a great privilege to have a university education. And with that privilege comes great responsibility. The world needs you now, educated and qualified, to make it a better place. 
More than ever before, all of us need people with degrees like yours from a university like yours to help build a more sustainable world, a more equitable world, a healthier world, a more compassionate world, a world with the courage to embrace diversity and togetherness simultaneously. I know you will do it. With this privilege of a University of Saskatchewan degree comes responsibility. Take hold of it, make it yours, Make the world a better place for you, for us, for everyone. Take the journey, take the risks, make a difference to a world that needs you now. None of you know exactly where you are headed next, and that's okay. This spring convocation includes honorary degrees being conferred to writer, activist, and elder Maria Campbell, author and naturalist Trevor Harriet, groundbreaking plant breeder Brian Harvey, diabetes researcher and innovator Thad No, and influential legal scholar and advisor Ed Ratushny. None of them knew what they would contribute and accomplish. They took the journey, not knowing its outcome, and broke down barriers for all of us who followed. You can do the same. Each of you graduating today has got it in you. Thank you in advance on behalf of everyone at the University of Saskatchewan for taking up this tremendous and timely challenge of making the world a better place. And I congratulate you on this convocation milestone in your lives. Welcome everyone. It is my honor and pleasure to celebrate this important milestone with you, which with a USASC degree will be the first of many milestones in your life. I am Grit McCreeth, Chancellor of the University of Saskatchewan and a proud graduate just as you are now too. While many of us have not been on campus for quite some time, most will recognize the space I am in today. Behind me is Convocation Hall. This place has immense history for USASC, and as the name implies, in the early days of the university, this is where USASC celebrated its convocation ceremonies. Though the number of students graduating outgrew Convocation Hall, this room remains the cornerstone of graduations in our university's history. Merlis Belcher Place joins that history as the new venue for Convocation Ceremonies, and we all look forward to having in-person celebrations once again, marking with great fanfare the transition from USASC student to USASC graduate. As USASC graduates, you now join more than 160,000 alumni worldwide, building the communities they call home and building our university's reputation through their outstanding influence and global reach. My role as chancellor is to confer your degrees, diplomas and certificates officially on behalf of the university something I have only had the pleasure of doing once face-to-face -face since stepping into this role in 2019. Convocation not only gives us the time to celebrate your accomplishments, but it also is a time when we acknowledge our honorary degree recipients and our most distinguished teachers and researchers. It is indeed a significant time for the university community. When I started in my official duties, one of the things I looked forward to the most was the opportunity to meet all of you and shake your hands at convocation. Circumstance has made that impossible. However, I am grateful that I am still able to take part via video. Before I turn you over to the honorary degree presentation and the rest of our program, I would like to leave you with some thoughts. Your time at USASC has prepared you for a lifetime of success, backed by a rich and rigorous education that will add value throughout your professional and personal lives. Today is a culmination of everything you have learned and achieved while at the University of Saskatchewan. And you are just getting started. I cannot wait to hear about the things you accomplish as a USASC graduate. Finally, 
you will note that over the course of the past few minutes, I have not recited any of the following words. COVID-19, unprecedented, grim milestone, or pandemic. Earlier this week, I was on a Zoom call with a number of graduating students who made me promise that I would not use any of those words in my address today. They told me that we have heard these words far too often this past 15 months. Here is hoping they are words we will not be saying with much regularity in the year ahead. I will simply say that in the last year, your campus activities, friendships, studies, and all the social aspects of university life have been compromised. Fate had a different plan for you, and I recognize that it took courage, tenacity, resilience, and fortitude to succeed in your academic pursuits, and for this, I commend you. As Dr. Seuss would say, yay you. Congratulations to all of you. We are so proud of what you have accomplished, and this is just the beginning. Today is your day, and remember, anything is possible. Thank you, Elder Duquette, President Stoichev, and Chancellor McCreeth. Next, we will turn to our honorary degree presentation, followed by our awards. Hello, I'm Suzanne Crested, Dean of the College of Engineering at the University of Saskatchewan, and I am humbled today to represent the University of Saskatchewan as it presents Trevor Harriet with the highest honour the University can bestow. Mr. Harriet is an award-winning writer, social justice activist, and an influential naturalist from Regina, Saskatchewan. He is passionate about protecting Canadian grasslands and prairie habitats for future generations, something I have come to appreciate much more since I moved to Saskatchewan three years ago. Mr. Harriet earned a bachelor's degree with honours in English from the University of Saskatchewan in 1979. He was celebrated in 2018 as a distinguished alumnus of St. Thomas More College at the University of Saskatchewan. As an accomplished author, he has received multiple awards, including the prestigious Cheryl and Henry Kloppenberg Award for Literary Excellence in 2017. Mr. Harriet is one of our province's most distinctive literary voices. He has written six books and his essays and articles have appeared in several anthologies and publications such as the Globe and Mail and Canadian Geographic magazine. As a writer of European heritage, Mr. Harriet recognizes the importance of honoring indigenous voices and cultures as they have often been muted by the forces of colonialism and racism. He advocates for these voices to take a central place in all conversations about land use and protection. Mr. Harriet is a champion of the movement to protect the remaining native prairie habitats in Western Canada. This land is home to numerous at-risk species, and he supports the ranching way of life that is part of our provincial identity. Trevor Harriet is known as one of the strongest voices for conservation in Western Canada. Today, we are privileged to hear from Mr. Harriet and to pay tribute to him. Please join me in congratulating Mr. Trevor Harriet, the University of Saskatchewan's newest recipient of the Honorary Doctorate of Letters. Chancellor McCreeth, President Stoicha, Elder Duquette, Dean Cresta, members of the graduating class, faculty members, parents, family, and friends. I'm very grateful to be standing here speaking to you today. It was such astonishing good news to receive the notice in the mail telling me that I would be conferred with this honorary doctorate. This university was and has always been a blessing in my life. I think maybe I didn't know it at first when I was young, but I've come to know that in recent years. For one thing, it was because it was the place that taught me that I can change. I can change my mind, change my way of thinking about and responding to the world around me. I had a dream the other night that I think was about change. I want to tell you a little bit about it. I was in my backyard doing something on our concrete pad by the garage, 
and I looked up and noticed that there was a strange man walking, striding right through our yard as though it was a public easement or pathway. And next to him was this very large dog. And I stood and he didn't even acknowledge me, just kept walking. And then this great big dog, which seemed like a mastiff or a wolfhound, huge scary beast, came lunging right at me and I ducked. And as sometimes happens in the weirdness of dreams, magically it just flew right over me. And, and that was it for that first part. But then when I received the invitation to speak to you, you know, it seemed like a bit of a, a scary thing, I guess, because I was wondering, well, how do I, and I was fretting a lot with my daughter, how am I going to inspire young people in a moment like this, where we are in the world right now? She said, don't ask me, just, just don't. You know, I often come to her to check out the things I'm writing or speaking about. She's a recent graduate herself, Mount Allison University last year. But no, inspiration is not much on her mind these days. And I imagine it's not much on yours either. In this second year of extraordinary time, it would be utterly preposterous and just wrong for an old man to presume that I might in any way inspire a generation that is inheriting a world that my generation more or less squandered. No, you already have a spirit. Your generation has its own particular spirit, one that is very different from mine. And for all kinds of reasons, which you know much more about than anyone my age. But I do want to say a bit about the world you're stepping out into from this day forward. There are many ways to name and describe it, all of which are probably on your minds. Apocalyptic is one of those words, to be sure, it may be the right one, but it means much more I think, than the end of something. In its original meaning, apocalypse is a time of pulling back the veil when the underbelly of reality is revealed to us. In apocalypse, we find ourselves in a different world where what we used to call normal doesn't apply anymore. COVID-19 has that in spades, of course, showing us things that we have tried to ignore, cover up, forget about. In particular, that our notions of private individual thriving and well-being are delusional, and we are intimately connected to each other's safety and welfare, and to what is happening in the more than human world we like to call nature. This pandemic will end when we come to terms with that globally, or it will not end at all. And just in case a global pandemic doesn't make it clear enough that none of us are safe until all of us are safe, we have the ongoing crises of climate change and biodiversity collapse to drive the point home. These existential threats may be slower and less present in our daily lives, but they too are revealing to us deep truths that former generations have been hiding from and suppressing. What else is being unveiled in the apocalypse of the moment? Well, how about patriarchy, misogyny, racism, colonialism, and the role that capitalism and other Western ideologies have played in all the above? Now this unveiling will define much more in your lives than it has in mine. But what I wanna say to you is that apocalypse is about change. We see the world in new ways and we change our minds about it and our way forward. And it happens for us on a personal level too. Necessary changes that can feel like our own private apocalypse. I came to the U of S at the age of 17 in 1976, scared and uncertain of what I was doing. Taking the bus down Clarence Avenue every morning to campus, salami sandwiches in my bag. I was a bit of a loner. Spoke to no one in class, really. I ate my sandwiches alone. I thought I wanted to be an artist. I've always drawn things, painted a bit from early childhood, so that seemed like the right thing to do. But my first year at the U of S changed that. The English class I took from Professor Doig had essays by Thomas Paine and Henry David Thoreau and Ralph Waldo Emerson, all in that old Norton reader we used back then. And they stirred something in me. Professor Doig's sophisticated explication and unfolding of the stories within the stories locating them within the history of ideas, psychology and philosophy, all of that stirred something in me. So I changed my mind, began to study literature, and that led me to other great teachers, Peter Millard, David Hyatt, Susan Gingell, Paul Bidwell, Bob Calder, all teaching English, and then Old Father Bistio and his philosophy religion classes at St. Thomas More, which were so wonderful. But the biggest change came to me during my third year, right at Christmas break. I remember the date, it was December 16th. After an intense month of writing exams and long papers, I suddenly had nothing to do. I'd always been, like I said, a bit antisocial. I was very critical of people, quick to judge them. 
Anyway, nothing else really in my life, nothing to occupy my mind on Christmas break. Now the studies were over. I found myself staring into an abyss of meaninglessness, a vacuum quickly filled with panic. I had no idea at the time what was happening. In those days, very few people spoke about mental health. I was convinced I was going mad and that no one else had ever experienced the fear and sadness that I plunged into. I didn't know it then, but that was probably the beginning of my life as a writer. The reading I had done in literature, history, politics, and philosophy gave me lots to start exploring the existential despair I was feeling. I began to keep a journal, first just to examine my rational thought patterns in the light of day, but then also to come to terms, really, for the first time, with what it is to be a young person stepping out into a world that had been constructed by powerful forces to hide the lies, violence, and injustice underpinning our economies and governments. So I took a year off, visited with psychiatrists, and I began to work with my hands. First, I got a job in an aluminum building products factory. Eventually, I was fired there for meeting with the United Steelworkers to see if we could form a union local and defend ourselves against an abusive owner. And then later, I took a job designing t-shirts and signs for a small silkscreen company. It was a great time in my life, working alongside and making friends with people who I had never been to university, who didn't have that privilege, but who were my age and some of them already had children. That was a revelation too. I was learning different things about how to change my mind. Things that perhaps are harder to learn in university class or a book. How to question and see past my own snap judgments of other people, but also how we are all so ensnared in the complexities and contradictions in the relationships between those who own a business and those who sell their labor for a wage. On my better days, I realize I'm still living in the afterglow of that private apocalypse, still observing my mind, trying to let it be changed by new circumstances, by the revelations the world has to offer, and there are plenty of them all the time. In that dream, after the dog lunged at me, I yelled at the man, telling him to get control of your dog. But he shrugged, unmoved by what had happened, by what I was saying. And then he said something like, well, you don't have to be afraid of that dog. I began to protest, and when that didn't have any effect, when I started trying to explain my fear of dogs that had come from childhood. And as soon as I did that, the dog came at me again in exactly the same way, leaping up towards me. But this time, I just stood there, and I felt and received the great weight of the dog against me. I held it, but nothing else happened. And it felt good. It felt very good to just be standing there embracing this huge, scary, unfamiliar beast. Yeah, sometimes my dreams are a little less than subtle. I'd gone to bed reading the opening chapters of Lee Miracle's My Conversations with Canadians, a book that my daughter had given me. Lee, a Stolo First Nations writer, is very good at discomforting the comfortable among settler people, and I need that as much as anyone. I write and talk a lot about land reform and prairie, about re-indigenizing the earth, but I know that there's a stony place in my heart where I am afraid of what that means, of what I may have to let go, what I may have to embrace. I guess that's what I want to say to you. The fears and anxieties felt most deeply by your generation as you move forward to whatever comes next in your lives are there to help you change, to change your mind, to help you to become the best possible versions of yourselves. I know that sounds simplistic, maybe even a bit corny, but sometimes the simple things are the ones we do need to embrace. This is what it is to live in apocalyptic times. We get through it by changing in the face of everything that scares us. And if there's any good news for this part of the world in particular, it's that the nightmare of colonization that has had the prairie world in its spell is beginning to fade. Thanks to the courage, the brave hearts of indigenous people who have always had most to fear in an apocalypse that for them began centuries ago. May each of you in the class of 21 Find your way toward courage in a world that is crying out for justice, transformation, and renewal. Congratulations, graduates. And a virtual high five. <laughs> Warm greetings to the engineering class of spring 2021, your family, your friends, and your loved ones. Last spring, all of our lives changed abruptly, making your final year of university an unexpected adventure, building those highly touted assets of agility and resilience 
more rigorously, if somewhat less elegantly, than any assignment we could have designed as your instructors. The physicality of our on-campus life, moving from class to class, from coffee shops to dorms, sporting events, libraries and apartments, at the same time as your professors trudged from engineering to Thorvaldsen, to meetings in industry and conferences around the world, sharing ideas and exploring the edges of what is known, all of this now assumes the dreamlike quality of a distant memory. We now flip from box to box, virtual lectures, stretch breaks and lounge wear for all, hardly recognizing the obstacles that were nearly insurmountable just a year ago. This virtual world has strengthened our connection to each other and to the University of Saskatchewan. I know this is something you will carry with you wherever you go, and I hope that our campus has become like a second home to you. I want you all to know that you will always be welcome when you come back. The friendships that spread rapidly through all of your lives while you were here with us are friendships that can last a lifetime. Stay connected. Those friends will understand parts of who you are that never change with the passing years. I want to give a nod today to our engineering colleagues who successfully and almost unbelievably piloted and scaled up the critical vaccines which will help us to emerge from this pandemic. The scale of this effort is not unlike putting a man on the moon from the perspective of a chemical engineer with some background in the pharmaceutical industry. Moving from test tubes to millions of doses every week, developing drugs in parallel with building the manufacturing processes, and doing this with the relatively new mRNA technology is a feat that we can all be very, very proud of. Engineers work behind the scenes to make miracles like this happen in many places and in many ways. You are now part of this great profession and this grand opportunity. The degrees you have worked so hard to earn will give you the strongest possible foundation for your future lives. Just as my grandparents lived through two great wars, the Spanish flu and the depression, you will rebound from COVID and go on to do great things. You will find your paths as engineers and have remarkable adventures building the future and solving tough problems. You will fulfill the many dreams you have today in ways that may surprise you. Convocation is one of my favorite times of the year. And while we cannot reach out and shake your hands as you cross the stage this year, while we are not meeting your parents and families today, our hearts are still bursting with pride and delight in your accomplishments. I know that your families are also bursting with pride, that you have over overcome this unexpected last hurdle and completed your degrees successfully. My warm congratulations to each and every one of you. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to introduce Remington Rohel, a dual degree recipient in engineering physics and computer science. Mr. Rohel is recognized today with the APEGS Gold Medal for top academic average calculated using all courses required for a Bachelor of Engineering. He is also the winner of the Governor General's Silver Medal based on his average calculated across all courses. He grew up in a farm near Anaheim, Saskatchewan and showed an early aptitude for math and physics, which led him into the engineering physics program. In university, he discovered computer science and decided to pursue a degree in it as well. Because he was not busy enough, he also joined the University of Saskatchewan space team and was a member and lead of the software team for the RADSAT Saskatchewan project. In the summer of 2020, he worked as a research assistant in the Institute of Space and Atmospheric Sciences Studies in the physics department studying ozone profiles in the atmosphere. Remington now works for the SuperDarn Group in ISAS, assisting in the operations and development of radars used to study the ionosphere. Our warm congratulations to Remington on this outstanding achievement. We will be watching your next chapters with great interest. 
Hello one and all, bonjour à tous. And in the languages of the lands where the University of Saskatchewan is located, Tansi, Haukoda, Idlanate, Haukola, Tanshi, Haukona, Anin. Please let me introduce myself to each of you. I am Dr. Irini, Provost and Vice President Academic here at the University of Saskatchewan. It gives me great pleasure to present our 2021 Governor General's Academic Medals on behalf of the Chief Justice of Canada, Richard Wagner. For more than 140 years, the Governor General's Academic Medals have recognised the outstanding scholastic achievements of students in Canada. Bronze medals are awarded at the secondary school level, silver at the undergraduate level, and gold at the graduate level. The Governor General's medals have since become one of the most prestigious awards that a student at a Canadian educational institution may receive. The Governor General of Canada provides the university with two silver medals annually to recognise our exceptional undergraduate students who achieve the highest academic standing upon graduation from a bachelor's programme. It gives me great pleasure to introduce our silver medallion recipients to you, Claire Duval and Remington Rowell. Claire is graduating with a Bachelor of Science Honours degree, High Honours, with a major in Physiology and Pharmacology. This fall, Claire will continue her studies at the University of Saskatchewan in the College of Medicine, where she will pursue her goal of becoming a physician. Remington is graduating from the University of Saskatchewan with a Bachelor of Science in Engineering Physics and a dual degree in Computer Science. Remington now works for the Superdan Group in ISAS, assisting in the operations and development of radars used to study the ionosphere. It is my pleasure to introduce to you Claire and Remington once again this recognition is a real testament to the hard work both of you put into your degrees. Well done, and congratulations on impressive achievements. Greetings. My name is Baljeet Singh. I am the Vice President Research and Professor of Veterinary Anatomy at the University of Saskatchewan. Today, I am delighted and honored to confer our university is one of highest honors upon a member of our academy. The University of Saskatchewan confers two distinguished researcher awards every year upon its most prominent and recognized scholars. The Distinguished Researcher Award of our university is conferred upon a scholar who has made significant and sustained achievements and has contributed outstanding artistic, scholarly, and research works within their disciplines and are recognized globally for doing so while they are working at the University of Saskatchewan. Today, I am delighted, I am chuffed to be announcing that Dr. Safa Kasab is one of the recipients of this year's Distinguished Researcher Award. Dr. Kasup is a distinguished professor and a Saskatchewan Centennial Enhancement Chairholder in our College of Engineering at our university. He has also held a Tier 1 Canada Research Chair in Electronic and Optoelectronic Materials and Devices at our university. Dr. Kasup came to University of Saskatchewan in 1986. Since then, he has built an exceptional career as an academic, a professional engineer, and a leading innovator. Dr. Kasab is globally recognized for his work on electronic and optoelectronic materials and associated devices, and for his leading scholarship in the area of photonics. This particular nomination for this award was put together by many of his peers. They have commented on his exceptional brilliance. They cite his development of a technology on amorphous selenium detector. 
Now let me mention the global impact of this particular technology that Dr. Kassab developed. This technology is used in more than 80% of the mammography equipments worldwide. This particular technology has resulted in early and better detection of the breast cancer in women, leading to reduction in the X-ray radiation exposure to the patients and reduction in the deaths which are associated with breast cancer uh, in, in women. This is an example, a shining example of type of the discoveries that are made at University of Saskatchewan and the discoveries that the world needs. And in that process, scholars like Dr. Kassab make the University of Saskatchewan the university that the world needs. Dr. Kassab has also made many other discoveries. I will mention one more, which is the characterization of the semiconductor materials. And that particular discovery was selected as a milestone paper by the International Society of Optical Engineering, and it was included in their milestone publication. Dr. Kassab has brought millions of dollars in research funding and has published more than 370 scholarly uh, publications. Dr. Kassab has been recognized uh, with many honors and awards. Among them, he has been selected as a fellow by 14 uh, uh, societies worldwide. Dr. Kassab in 1996 was also conferred a DSc degree by the University of London in the UK for his work in the area of material sciences within electrical engineering. Dr. Kassab has also received two Lifetime Achievement Awards from the Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers. One of those is the Owinski Lectureship Award and the other one is the HAM Medal. The HAM Medal is also given to a Canadian um, engineer who is an outstanding educator and it's also given by the Institute of Electronic, Electrical and Electronic Engineers. Dr. Kassab, your scholarship is exemplary. You have inspired your colleagues, you have inspired your trainees, and you have made University of Saskatchewan the university that the world needs. On behalf of the community of artists, scholars, and researchers at the University of Saskatchewan, please accept my warmest congratulations and best wishes on having such a stellar career at University of Saskatchewan. Thank you so very much for all you do and congratulations. Today we celebrate that you have earned your degree from the University of Saskatchewan. Congratulations, you did it. With your degree, you join an ever-growing alumni family of more than 158,000 USAS graduates around the world. We congratulate you on all your success and all your achievements that are sure to come. And now the following video from the University of Saskatchewan Alumni Association shows where a USAS degree can take you. Welcome to the USAS alumni family. You have persevered through some of the most challenging times that our world has ever faced and you have come out on top. You have come out on top. You have weathered the storm and won. Your graduation today is but one of the milestones. It's but one of the many milestones you will face in the coming years. Remember your classmates. Remember your professors. Remember your professors. Remember all the victories and challenges you faced. Remember all this fondly. Remember all this fondly. When you enrolled at the University of Saskatchewan, it was a new beginning. Your next steps beyond campus are a new beginning for you as well, as you will continue to grow professionally and personally. Make sure you take time to celebrate your victories with your family and friends. And just know that the USASC Alumni Association is very happy to call you one of their own. From all of the 162,000 people around the world who call themselves USASC Alumni, Congratulations. Congratulations. Be what the world needs. One, two, one, two. Grab your coat and get 
touch your hat Leave your worries on the doorstep Just direct your feet To the sunny side of the street Can't you hear the pitter-pat? And that happy tune is your step Life can be so sweet On the sunny side of the street I used to walk in the shade With those blues on parade No longer afraid Because this rover crossed over On the sunny side